All right, welcome to another edition of the Franklin Community High School Career Exploration Project. And with me today, I have the owner operator of Main Street Consulting, and that is Brad Ott. Brad, thank you for joining me. Glad to be here, Brian. Thank you for doing this great project. Thank you. Um, so first of all, I guess just kind of talk about Main Street Consulting, what what it is, what you do, and and how you got to this um, to this role. Sure. Um, it, Main Street Consulting is my little business that I own and operate alone. I'm a solo operator. Uh, it's Mainly, it's a land surveying business that supports civil engineering projects. For the, in a short, that's the short version of it. Uh, we started it in 1990. We, my wife, is really the true boss. But uh, we, we started in 1999 um, and it had some bumps and hills and valleys across the the last 20 years, but it's been going really strong for the last 10 or 15 years. Um, I started as a land surveyor when I'm 51 years old now, and when I was 12 years old, I used to help my daddy out. So that's the short version of how I got started in the business. Now, as far as uh, land surveying, what's kind of the general role for that? You know, it, land surveying is really a wide uh, uh, field. Um, you, you can be involved in anything from really what I've been focused on a lot lately is what I call mom and pop stuff where grandma and grandpa have a hundred acres and they want to divide, divide it up for the kids and that kind of thing. Uh, that's been my focus a lot, but you can go from that. I call that just dumb dirt surveying. <laughs> um, but the, I participate in a message board online with guys all around the world. And one, one guy uh, helped, build the new world trade center uh, building oh, so he wow. surveyed very detailed vertical high high stress high tolerant or low tolerance stuff wow that's i bet that i bet that's uh that's kind of stressful so is it i mean do you find a, a little bit of stress in the job as far as just getting the uh the land um divvied up properly or anything like that or is it uh yeah you know, for sure there there's a, a range of that as well and there, there's different levels of stress for different aspects of the job some of what we do is uh, construction staking support for civil engineering projects say somebody wants to build a building and a parking lot and a street and a sewer line or something like that and you you can't really afford to m make big mistakes on those expensive uh, projects and that can be stressful sometimes but if if you take a deep breath and make sure you've done your your checks ahead of time and afterward, you can sleep easier at night. So. Um, what far as far as training, education, all of that? What sort of training and education have you had? Me personally, I've I've got two two degrees from Purdue, one in civil engineering, one in land surveying engineering, um, and, and so but they're so similar to each other. It really is just a five year program. It took me eight years, but I, but I got there. Um, hey, that's the way to go. I, I mean, you might as well take eight years, right? School is a place to be kids stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that was, that was a dual bachelor program. Yes, sir. That's right. And that's that's the path I took. Um, I have many friends and peers in the profession who uh, ha have zero college um, and they're they're doing very, very well in this field as well. So there, there, you can there's a lot of range in that as well uh, with, with this profession as well. It's just kind of about where you get in and how much you you're willing to work, I guess, on that, isn't it? Yes, and what and what are your goals? Do you want to go to this particular aspect of it? Do you want to be involved as a field guy only, or an office guy only, or gal all only? Do you want to own a business? Do you want to be a licensed guy or gal? I'm um, licensed to survey in Indiana, and it's state specific for surveying. So I'm in, licensed in Indiana, and then the surrounding five, four or five states: Michigan, yeah. Illinois, and Ohio and Kentucky. Um, so to be licensed, a lot of times you do need to be have degrees or at least some college education. But like I said, I've got I've got good friends in the business that have no college as well. So right. there are, there are paths for everyone. Okay. 
So when you're when you're looking at your job, what are some things, the, some of the pros that you you have? And then obviously with every job, there are some things that you don't necessarily like. Um, what are some of those, some of the cons for your job? So for me and my business, the, 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 the big pro is that I, I own the shop. Uh, and so I set the schedule. I choose if I want to sleep in till eight or nine or 10 on Tuesday. Uh, or if I want to sit and be working hard at six or seven or eight p.m. on Friday night while everybody's watching TV, I can I can do that. It's easy to the, the flexibility of the schedule is really a big pro for me. Right. I can and I try hard at this age and stage in life to tell people I'm semi-retired, and that's kind of a half joke, but it's also half the truth. To try to slow the pace down, just try to uh, not be eight. 10, 12, 18 hour work days, try to make it more of a, of a living and not a, a job. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a big pro for me. Cons are the expect managing expectations of other people. Sometimes it works well, better than others. Oh, uh, for the, for many, many years, my backlog was in the terms of weeks. People had to wait two or three or four or six or 12 weeks for me to get the job done. And now it's in terms of months all of a sudden in the last couple of years. And that, that's been a very stressful transition. And it's hard to tell people six months, you know, thanks for calling. I know you have a project you're thinking you're wanting to get done this summer, but it might be this winter. And that, yeah. that's, that's been some stress lately trying to learn how to adjust that that's probably like the the double-edged sword it's like it's it's a con because you have to temper the expectations but it's a pro because you've got that kind of business that's coming in and you've got the desire for for your services so it's probably um a double good, edge. yeah a good bad thing there i guess you're absolutely right that's absolutely true and i when I'm saying my gratitudes to God that for the workload, sometimes it sounds like I'm whining. <laughs> sometimes it's like, oh, Lord, thank you for all this work. But and other times it's truly, genuinely, thank you very much. I, yeah. Yeah, that's it's, uh, a lot of a lot of prayers can sometimes sound like that. right? <laughs> for sure. And hey, well, well, I'll, I'll stay focused on our <laughs> topic at hand I, I could get a go down another rabbit hole if we wanted to but. no i i understand um now so the pros and cons we talked about as far as personality for land surveying civil engineering things like that um what kind of person do you think would like the job and what type of person do you think might not be suited for this type of job yeah so for the land surveying thing you know i generally half the job is outside and half the job is inside roughly speaking and that's a big pro as well you know when you get tired of one aspect of the job it turns out the next the next few hours or days or weeks will be the other aspect inside or outside so that's a good thing but for personalities um a lot of the people in this profession really like to keep to themselves and do not like to communicate and interact with other people very much. Um, so, and me to a fault, I hide behind emails and really avoid phone calls and uh, or video, works. video recordings like this, like, yeah, we're, so yeah, I appreciate I my, you stepping outside of your comfort zone. Exactly. Absolutely. Right. I got my camera turned off, but I got my really cool logo up there. <laughs> uh, but so and some aspects of my job even take me in front of a plan commission or city council meetings to help present certain projects. And, and that really gets me out of my comfort zone. And I get nervous and I, and I tell them that right off the bat. And I'm saying, even at this stage in my career, I've been doing the public meeting part for 20 years. I still get a little nervous and, and that kind of puts everybody at ease when I start off by saying, you know, I'm a little nervous at t doing this, but here we go. And, that helps a little bit, but back to the personality thing. Um, there are places in the profession for a, a variety of personalities, really. I mean, there, there are places for the public speaking, confident person. Um, and, and there are places for the mousy, shy person to hide as well. 
Yeah. So it's a little bit of a little bit of everything for that. Yeah. Um, let's say someone wants to get involved in land surveying or, or uh, mm -hmm. civil engineering. What kind of classes right now as, as high school students would you suggest they they be looking at? Trigonometry, triangles are, are incredible tools for what we do, uh, geometry, and um, I, I believe you, you've got an excellent math department with excellent teachers that have practical experience uh, that they use to help with those things. Um, yeah, so, so those classes in high school, for sure. Um, those math classes. Math is truly, it is pretty important and not, not necessarily high level calculus type math is not so critical for my day to day stuff, but, but certainly the basic algebra and the trig and the geometry is, is important. Okay. Now kind of get you out of here on this one. Um, going back a few years to when Brad Ott was in, was in high school. Some piece, some advice that you wish he had, or just some advice in general um, that you could give high school students. You know, you've got. Yeah. Uh, we were talking a little bit. You've got three student, three kids. Uh, your third one is going to be a senior this year. So you've you've seen it. What's some general advice you have for high school students? Not even necessarily career wise, just general advice. Um, you know. If, for for me in my my life it, it's been i've been very very fortunate i i found something to do with my life that i really enjoy and i found it when i was 12 years old and it turned into a lifetime career and i'll i'll do it till i die i don't plan to retire and so i'm very very grateful that that's been easy for me people look at 16, 17, 18 year old kids in school and say, what are you going to do with your life? And that's such a heavy, heavy, stressful question to ask kids. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I want to say is to, to kids is try to, the, the world is incredibly huge of, and full of, full of opportunities of all kinds. So figure out what you enjoy about life and do that. Mm -hmm. there, 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 there will be a way and a path that will that will show itself to you um, to, to, to do whatever that thing is with your life. Spend your time living uh, in a way that you enjoy it, whatever that ends up being. And, and I know that's a big fuzzy thing, but but make that the focus. No, that's... Uh... It's, it's got to be something that you enjoy so where you don't necessarily wake up and just dread getting going to work or you're working for a weekend or anything like that. And I'm not, yeah, I'm not even really talking specifically about work necessarily. Right. Um, if, if you love to, what, well, there's a million things, but make, make what you, do what you enjoy for life. And if it, if that lines up with work, great. And if work lines up with that, great. And if, yeah, yeah. Well, Brad, I really appreciate you uh, you coming on here and joining me today, uh, taking some time out of your day, and uh, my pleasure. Kind of opening up. So once again, um, Brad Ott, owner and operator of Main Street Consulting in Franklin, Indiana. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian.